Now I'm going to present you my presentation. Sorry. <laughs> so, imagine that we're in a big box and we need to figure our way out of it. Everyone can see the doors, but is this the only way out? Thinking outside of the box or looking beyond the formula actually mean the same thing. But the difference is the aspect that you look at them. So, now I'm about to tell you something that you think of all the time. When you go to bed, when you wake up, when you sleep, when you eat. Let me tell you, it's math. So, some of you might be a little skeptical about this presentation, but uh, I promise to explain everything. When I was grade six, I had a very calm and unstressed life, but the moment when I needed to prepare for exam in the end of seventh grade ruined my whole time. I mean, I had so much tension for the homeworks that I needed to turn in time, preparation, lessons, and stuff, and this suddenly started changing my mindset. I knew that I have a lot of responsibilities and I need to deal with them in some way. So I thought, in my case, the language Bulgarian that I studied back then, and other subjects like physics, chemistry, and biology, I cannot save time not learning about them very uh, deeply, because they have a lot of specifications. But the big question came, what about math? I mean, there are one million different formulas for both algebra and geometry, and how I'm supposed to learn them. And uh, Instead of doing, instead of learning them, I did some mathematical operations to figure out if they have something in common. I mean, there are so many. So, a uh, genius idea down on me that they have a very big relationship between them. And now, uh, I decided to share it with someone. So, this opportunity popped up, and here I am, saying them in front of you. So, the topics that we're going to explore today are commutative law of addition, distributive law of division, and a simple formula, difference of squares. And, I forgot, in the end there will be a little test for you, so don't get too frustrated, I promise to help. So the first topic that we're going to look at is commutative law of addition. I believe everyone here has been in second grade, right? Yeah, and knows its mathematical application. Uh, for those that don't, it's on the board. So, commutative law of addition. The big question is how do we use math now in this specific moment and in this presentation? So, let's say it in other words that it doesn't sound so fancy. What are you going to put first, your shirt or your shoes? It really doesn't matter. I mean, your shoes are on your feet and the shirt is up on your body. But in another case, like, what are you going to put first, your socks or your shoes? If you put your socks and then your shoes, it's fine. But if you put your shoes first, it will be ridiculous to try to put your socks, of course. Um, so, to tell you what actually uh, commutative flow looks like, it's A plus B equals B plus A. So, I have a little problem for you. 3 plus 4, as you see on the board, equals 4 plus how much? Congratulations to those that said the correct answer, it's 3. So, I'll tell you a little story. Long time ago, there was... Uh, a uh, young man, or let's say a kid, named Gauss, which in fourth grade was supposed to solve the sum of the numbers from one to a hundred, imagine, for the whole period because their teacher decided to give them something to do. So, after a couple of minutes, the young man went to his teacher with already solved problem, and the teacher was just amazed. Whoa, how did the young man manage to solve this difficult problem? And uh, after time, like when they realized that it was a very smart method that uh, Gauss used, the uh, method was named after him, after Gauss, not after the teacher. So to show you how it looks like, our next problem, example one. We don't have the numbers from one to 100. We have the numbers from one to 29. And since I'm supposed to show something tricky, not because you can find the method of Gauss in the internet, and um, from one to 100, there are 100 numbers, right? And in our case, we have from 1 to 29, which is an uh, odd amount of numbers. So, as we see here, what Gauss did was he combined the last number and the first number, in our case, 29 plus 1, and he found that, that the sum of 29 plus 1 is the same as 28 plus 2. And he tried this for all the numbers, like 27 plus 3, then he went uh, far to 16 plus 14, and he found that it was 30. In his case, 101, but in our case, 30. But the big question is, what are we doing with the 15 in the middle? You see that we have groups of two numbers that have a sum of 30, but for 15, what, 15 plus how much gives us 30? 
15, of course, I know it. Um, I'm just trying. Uh, but in order to figure out the groups of two numbers, we need to divide the amount of numbers, in our case 29, divided by 2. So we have around 14.5 groups. That means the 0 0.5 that we have a half group, which is our uh, number 15. So to show how the solution for this problem looks like, it's this. It's long, right? But I'll explain it. So the first uh, rows, you can see that we have uh, the thing that I explained to you about, the combination of the numbers. And then when we go down to here, we can figure out that we have 14 groups, as I already said, of sums of 30, right? And then we need to add our last number, which is 15. And finally, we get our answer of 435. I know that we got too serious, but still, it's math. Then, our next problem is this one. It's an example with even amount of numbers, so we can see how Gauss uh, found out the sums without the tricky part with the left out number in the middle. So we'll check it again. 30 plus 1 equals 31. 29 plus 2 equals 31. 28 plus 3 still equals 31. Then 17 plus 14, 31. 16 plus 15, 31. No middle number, everything's fine. So we have 15 groups because 30 divided by 2 is 15 times 31, easy, 465. And as you saw here, I gave you a couple of examples to see for yourself that commutative flow is not only in math and in these presentations, but it's in life and you even, I believe, you don't think when you use it. And the most important thing that I want you to learn from this presentation is that math isn't just a science. You need to manipulate or adapt the problems in a way that's more suitable for you. So, now going back to the topic. Next, distributive law of division. It sounds pretty fancy, right? Laws, division, stuff. But it really looks like 1 plus 1 in parentheses divided by 2 gives us 1, right? With the appropriate finger, of course. But to give you a more uh, casual example in your everyday life, when you go to the cinema with one of your friend, friends, only one because we're not that popular, of course, like Stefan, uh, you will buy popcorn, one bucket per person, right? When you go to the movie, you sit, the tension from the movie starts and you start eating, right? And you have two options. Either put a bucket in the middle between your, uh, you and your friends and eat it. Then when you eat it, take the other one and put it in the middle and eat it again. Or take a bucket per person and be sure that you eat the same amount of popcorn. So these are the two main options that you have if you want to uh, keep it simple. But in other cases, like this one, it won't be that simple. Let me read it for you to see uh, how difficult is this problem. Negative 452 and 1728 divided by 7 and 5 eighths plus 574 and 1728 divided by 7 and 5 eighths. I didn't memorize this, I have it on the screen down here. But uh, the thing is, how are you going to solve this? Any ideas? Don't be shy. Yes? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> Calculator, calculator, you don't need to solve this, calculator. But if you don't have one, you will use our simple law, as Liam already tried to say, but I interrupted him. And what are you going to do? You have a common factor, seven and five eighths, and our next step, come on, yeah, it will look like this. You have in the numerator uh, the numbers 574 and 1728 minus 452 and 1728 over our common factor. And after you solve these hard numbers, you will get this. 122 and 61 over 8. This is 7 and 5 eighths, but in a fraction. So when we do our mathematical operation, which we learned in 8th grade, let's say, you'll get our simple number, 16. It's not that difficult, right? It's not like 2,052,000 or a fraction. And here I proved to you as well that it's not that difficult to use simple laws in second grade and uh, math problems which you probably solved in 10th grade. So, to go to our next topic, as I said, difference of squares. This is our formula that I was talking about. In fact, we go way back to seventh grade, which is a long time ago, but you need to at least remember something. And my question is, a squared minus b squared, how much does it equal? Let me tell you. This, of course. 
I mean, you need to have the formula to figure it out. But um, the thing is, this is one of the most commonly used formulas at all, and it really makes math easier. I'll tell you why, because of this problem. You have some big numbers, and uh, as I already said, you solve it with a calculator, of course. Don't make your life too difficult. But you will use this formula for this problem, because I showed you before, you have two numbers which are squared, and you need to find their difference. In this case, we have 196 squared minus 154 squared over 28 squared minus 7 squared. So what is our first step? Of course, we need to find the difference of the numbers multiplied by their sum to look like this. So when we find it with a calculator, the numbers, and this one, this one, this one, and this one, we will get this. I ordered it for you so you can see that 350 divided by 35 equals 10, and 42 divided by 21 equals 2. So actually, our answer will be 20. So if we go back to the main idea of this presentation, how do you use math now? I will give you an example. OK, let's say that you have money in a bank, and uh, your growth of the money monthly is exponential, which can hardly happen. But you have a loan in the same bank, and it has the same properties as the deposit that you have. And you need to figure out your, uh, the profit that you have every month. So you're going to square your uh, deposit, then you take it out, they'll take out the square loan, and easy, you'll get uh, the profit that you have or the money that you own to the bank because the loans are too big. So, now we get to the most interesting part of our lesson, the test. I mean, you have the option not to participate, but since you have nowhere to go, I think you should. And now, uh, this will, these uh, problems that I have for you here are a summary of everything that I explained, and we'll see how my explanations affected you, in a way, and probably not embarrass myself, of course. So, that's why I'll help. First problem. You want me to read it for you? Yeah, I'll do. That's part of the script. So, 1 times 2 times 3 plus 4 times 2 times 4 times 6, I'm sorry, plus 4 times 8 times 12 plus 7 times 14 times 21 uh, over 1 times 3 times 5 plus 2 times 6 times 10 plus 7 plus uh, times 21 times 35. Pretty long. So, I won't read you my solutions because they're still long, but I will point to you, how do we solve this? If we go and look in front of the parentheses, we have a common multiple, which is 6 or 2 times 3, the way that you prefer it. And in the denominator, we have the same thing, 3 times 5. So if we look the parentheses very closely, we'll see that they're the same. And since we have division, they're probably, when we divide the same numbers, we'll get 1. And the solution for this will be 2 over 5, because 3 we have it in the numerator and denominator, and the parentheses are the same, so crisscross applesauce, we have it, everything ready. <laughs> so 2 over 5 or 0 0.4, the way that you prefer. Our next problem, still from the test, will be this. It's slightly different than the one before. So I'll still read it for you to understand it. 11 to the power of k plus 3 minus 11 to the power of k plus 2 plus 11 to the power of k plus 1, in parentheses, divided by 111. It will be very easy if we can divide 11 by 111, but no, sorry. So, we still will use the same thing that we did before. We'll rearrange the problem so it's more suitable for us to solve it. It will look like this. 11 to the power of k plus 1 times uh, the thing in the parentheses, which is 11 squared plus 11 minus 1, divided by uh, still 111. And finally, when we uh, simplify within the parentheses on the next line, we'll get this. 11 to the power of k plus 1 times 11, uh, 111, I'm sorry, divided by 111. And finally, our answer will be this, as you see here. To conclude, unfortunately, our lecture that I enjoyed very much, I need to say that from the perspective of a young man and a student surrounded by technology and its uh, variety of uses, I never ask myself, why do I follow some steps for writing an email or something? They probably would sound logical if I think of it, but I don't. So if we go back to the topic that 
It's, everything is about the different aspects of looking at things. I figured out that I'm passionate about math because I'm not, I don't like only solving problems, but I like the way that it affects me. It taught me that I need to adapt everything in a way that's more suitable for me. And I really found out that math isn't just a science that employs figures, theorems, and other numbers, or something that's boring for you. But it represents life in a different way. And it provides an interpretation for the people that prefer this way of living, just looking beyond the formula. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.